My name's George Huerta. Uh, I was a division director at New Marcus for about four or five years. Uh, left there, went to Europe for about three, three-ish years, came back and uh, started my business back up. Uh, a little bit of my, my history of education, uh, I was actually a civil engineer major at AMF. I didn't like it. I was more artistic. I was doing dorm rooms and things of that sort. I did some internships in, in California with the highway department. Uh, I was testing rocks and asphalt and things like that, doing um, exams. And, uh, but it was interesting, while I was in there, I was doing sculptures and different things with asphalt. And people said, are you sure this is what you want to do? You seem more artistic. And uh, so when I went back to a I transferred to U of H and, and uh, I kind of started doing, pursuing what I love. Uh, I bring that because I couldn't deny what I who I was, what I feel God intended me to be. And so when I, when I talk to people that are you know, creative, obviously you are creative people, you, you're doing a, a career path that takes a lot of creativity. So embrace that, you know, it, it's a passion. Uh, I you know, put everything on the line, so to speak, to do that because I knew that's what I love. And so I knew if I did that, it wouldn't be work for the rest of my life. I'll have fun. When you have fun, do special things, and you can really make a difference. So always remember that as you go down this path, try to always have fun. It's hard work, but it, it's fun. You gotta make it fun, okay? Um, so this is Monica, this is my fiance. So we're trying to shout out to the sweethearts, um, and we reunited about five years ago, and we found out that we do the same things. So I started doing it in Houston, uh, window displays for the malls and, and branched out doing fashion shows, galas, interior design, and it just kind of filtered off. The reason why, I think, is because I cared what I, what I was doing, and it showed in the work. And so then people saw that, and then it just kind of grew. So it kind of, it, it creates its own identity. So when, when you're doing the work that you're doing, don't take the shortcuts when you, when you feel like, man, I don't know, I, I'm tired. That's when you need to do it, okay? And, and you'll get to that place where you need to go. Uh, um, today I'm going to be sharing a lot of window displays, what I think are effective window displays, things that, that are, uh, I think businesses and, and different uh, designers focus on. And then also, believe it or not, you're going to see some designers window displays that I don't get it. I think they, they kind of missed the, the ball. Just because you are you can be a Prada or Valentino or, doesn't mean that you always know everything. Uh, and, and things get missed. doesn't mean it was considered their direction, but this is when you got to kind of pay attention to the detail and always focus that it's about the higher. Okay? So we'll get started. Here's a touch of green. It's a window display I like. It's real simple. You obviously see that it's about the clothes and what are they trying to express? Color green. So it's a pretty simple and effective window display. Uh, obviously, you know, what I would have liked is some branding. All they had to do is add a name, some vinyl, and then it would have been, and even maybe the wording, touch of green. Now, this is a picture that I was, that I was kind of talking about uh, with Prada. One thing that I didn't like that they did was, if you notice, you don't really see the vinyl, you don't see the lettering, you wouldn't right away, you know, catch who it is. Um, also, there's not really a backdrop to it, so it kind of blends in with everything. So it's kind of a missed opportunity, in my opinion, because you're not really seeing the item for what it is, and you, could, you missed out on some branding. So I feel like that was not a well-executed window display, okay? Overpowering. Now, I don't know, I think this might be anthropology, yeah. Um, or window, right? But you kind of lose what it's about, the clothing. It's this overwhelming window display, a lot of detail, but it gets lost in, in everything. So was it a beautiful window? Yeah, but was it effective? I don't think so. Uh, they could have did a lot better. And then even the, the name kind of gets lost. Simple goes a long way. Balloons, some birds, it real, it, it's, it's a, a, a effective way of, of displaying, and clearly you see that it's about the scarf. 
pushing the brand. This was interesting. So I, when I saw this, I, I know we talked about a lot of stuff, a lot of um, overpowering things. This is somewhat overpowering, but if you know Etro or Paul Smith and, and Hermes and some of these brands, Versace, you know them by their patterns. So obviously this is you know, really pushing the, the pattern of, of who it is. So I think they did a great job in, in really focusing on what they do best. And, and this is a Etro window. So I really appreciated that they pushed their brand in the pattern. Uh, I, I think they did a good job on that. I recognized it right away, right away. So, and it helps that it was real colorful. So, yeah, I think they, at the same time, even though it's overpowering and, and you wouldn't see too much of the clothes kind of blends in, they really push the brand and the pattern. Color contrast. You have the, obviously the white, beautiful dress uh, with that green. So it just pops that color contrast. Not to mention the dress is just fabulous. This is a uh, window display that Monica and I did uh, at the River Center, the old Express window, and this was for the American Institute of Architects. Yeah, and and so they asked us if we can help. Now again, everything's on a budget all the time, so you really gotta be creative. So what we did was these giant uh, four by eight panels. We took different time periods. We put the vinyl to communicate. We did these kind of magazine covers. Now again, this is an angle where at the street level, so we couldn't get like really a front shot that well, but you really see it straight on, you really see the message. It was very effective, and we had the, the colors changing every, uh, it was like every five minutes, so we changed it to a blue, to a green, to a white. So it still kept a lot of interest, it felt it was different, uh, but it really communicated what the event was about. Dramatic. Now, this is a window that you always see like in New York, where they kind of have the, the drapes uh, closed. Now, obviously, it's overpowering. And you would say, well, I really don't get what the message is, or the main purpose for them is to reveal this dramatic display and just to get you to that location. And then after that, that's that's what they want. And then you're gonna go inside uh, more than likely, but uh, this is something that's just real dramatic. They want you to spend time looking at it, finding things, uh, just spending time at the location and get you there. It's a beautiful window, but it's not really a push Necessary product, you just want to create interest and get you to the that point. Pattern. I love this Versace window. Obviously, the clothes, it, it's it's uh, dramatic and, and clean, but how the pattern just draws you in. So it's a, it's a, a beautiful thing when you're working with, with clothes, windows, any kind of uh, material that you can create where the eye moves, where you want it to go, uh, how you want to feel. But I, I love this window, how the pattern just brings you to the center. Uh, texture and color. Now, this is something that I do a lot. I'll take elements that, that are very cheap. I would probably in this case, I would have, I don't know if it, this would have done this, but I would take like foam, I'll cut it with a heat knife, paint it, and just stack it, and that would have been a great window. You could play with the line, you could put some on the wall. But I like the idea that they, that texture and the color that really brings out the, the feel that you want. Uh, I think this is an anthropology window. Uh, pattern and style. Uh, one thing that I like about Tory Burch, you know when you see it. You know when you see Tory Burch. You know they have a certain style, a certain pattern. Again, they're pushing, uh, the storefront obviously has the, the colors and their branding, uh, but even with the windows and the, and the shapes that they have, it's very Tory Burch. Uh, I think they, they do a good, a good job in communicating that from, from inside the store and out. Me, I like to get inspired a lot by Versace. I love Versace, Prada, all these uh, people have a, a certain style and, and branding. What I love about Versace is that the, co the color contrast and the detail is just fabulous. And uh, anytime I can use that in a window, uh, I take the opportunity. It's a, a find something that inspires you when you when you go into a store or merchandising. Find that piece that has interest. Then add to that. Uh, make it that an accessory. Make it pop. Uh, something that you can get inspired and then get you motivated to continue. Uh, when you're merchandising, don't always just think about the clothes. Think about the accessories. A lot of times. Uh, 
when I work with different stores and we look at numbers, we always evaluate, you know, the, and everybody always seems to talk about you know, the clothes, but so little do they focus on the accessories. And I think it's kind of a missed opportunity. That could be the one that makes your, your year. Uh, and you gotta make that moving it, but accessories can make the outfit too. So I really love that on this one, the Toy Birch, that they really showed a lot of accessories. Uh, I think they did that more than likely for a purpose that they were trying to move some of that because people know they have it. I think it's important that you not only do a window display, but you see what the needs of the business is. And everything you're doing, you gotta find out why, because at the end of the day, it's a business, okay? So you gotta be paying attention to uh, not just going in there and saying, oh, this is great, let me show this and show that. But you got to say, what are your needs and what are you hurting? What do you need to push this year and when this season? Things of that sort. So that's where you can make a difference because that, it doesn't just make it an effective window for the store, for the business. But it also, believe it or not, can save jobs. Uh, uh, it can uh, make the success of the business, for the owner, uh, to believe in some of these things. And then it gives you some empowerment to, to do more of a a voice of what suggestions, you know, that they can go. Because at the end of the day, they, then they recap and they look at the numbers and say, oh my God, my accessories went up. And that's such a, a, a vital part. So keep in mind, within the passion, think, think business also. How can you incorporate what you're doing here in a business? And, and, and what other people are, are doing, what can you do that's different? I, I say what? Rarely do people that do window displays or any kind of merchandising really think about the business and look at the numbers. Rarely. They go in there, they see something nice, they want to put it out. You've got to look at the numbers. And then from the numbers dictate what you can use and you kind of balance it. But it does need to look pretty. So there's a, there's a fine line, but you need to at least consider that. Branding, Tory Birch. Giant donut, draws your attention. I love Tory Birch. Tory Birch. They want you to see Tory Birch, the name. And so I love the idea that they obviously did this to catch your attention and then to look at Tory Birch. So that was an effective window. Uh, it caught my attention enough to want to put it on the slide. Interior design. This is one thing that I, I'm trying to push in our, our work. We do interior design, uh, commercial and residential. But we also do a lot of uh, window displays and that, that kind of sort. I love incorporating both. I love incorporating, you know, interior design patterns inside fashion. And you, I'm sure you see it all the time. Uh, you know, certain designs, and then you see it in, in drapery and, and bedding. Uh, and, and you even see it, interior designers going into home collections. So obviously there's a connection in the creativity. So what you're doing now, don't limit yourself. Know that you can branch to different interior design, to fashion, in different ways, and then it makes you a little bit more versatile. This is a job I did uh, for the Gabriels. It was a, a quick job, but I just took basically the yellow tail, stacked their, their boxes, and I just did some graphics that just went straight up. And I think my focus was that it's pretty colors, it's bright, but I can brand it even more. So I took the stripes all the way up, and I think uh, it was an effective display for them. Very clean, but obviously it's the old hotel, you can't miss it. And then you have attention to detail. This is a, a Tiffany's window. The jewelry is very small, obviously, uh, but it's all the, in the detail. So when you look at their displays, you can tell that everything's just perfect, perfect touch when they, they execute it, uh, the lighting, uh, everything you see there is attention to detail. Uh, I actually did the window displays last year for Tiffany's La Pantera, and I'll be doing it this year as well. So I'm excited about that. Um, even though we have a business, I'll, I'll freelance. But people will call me up and say, can you do our, you know, some of our windows? And I just love it. I always kind of go back because I don't mind doing that kind of, I say, labor work. Because it's fun. And when you see the end product, it's just, you got to make it fun. So uh, this is, for me, I'm excited this year uh, to do their windows again. Do y'all ever uh, take the opportunity to look at the Tiffany windows, La Pantera? Anybody raise their hands? Not the great When I was in Houston, I used to go to the Galleria just to look at their windows. 
Those five per meals of field trip. Uh, this is one we did for also the Gables. Uh, and I thought, uh, you know, let me try doing a magazine cover uh, front. And I wanted to communicate, uh, get people's attention. So I just kind of took the sayings and did a graphic and really kind of kept it tamed to something that could stand for a long time. And then uh, this is a Neiman Marcus window. Obviously, it's real simple, real clean. Lighting's obviously critical. Most of Neiman's windows are very simple and sophisticated. There's a couple reasons for that. Obviously, they want to focus on the clothes, but they change them out every week. And there's only so much you can do in a week with your own workload that, you know, so they're purposely made simple for that reason, but also it's always about the clothes. Now, they do allow you every now and then to do your own windows and be creative you know, as much as you want. Uh, but I always appreciated the simplicity of it uh, when you actually have fine designers. Uh, it's, it's easy to do that, to show the clothes. You can do a window display and if you want to specifically point out things and you think you, it's critical that you do that, then you can actually write it out and make it simple for the customer to see. I always call, uh, call it the lowest common denominator. You gotta think that you're, you're communicating to the person that, assume that it's the person that's really not gonna get it, and you got, kinda have to go in that approach and, and make the, the window where anybody's gonna go find it and, and get the message. It has to be that basic. Um, a lot of times, you only have a fraction of a time. It could be a window that's where there's cars moving by, so you gotta think like, I only have a few seconds to get their attention. And it's critical that you do because right next to them is probably another store. So you want you want yours to get the, the attention. Lighting. I mean, this is branches that you can get anywhere. I think it was a beautiful job in execution. Real simple. Uh, you know, obviously, they have a bird in there, uh, but I love how they did the shadows and and, and uh, layered the branches. I think they did a great job with, with lighting. It, what makes this window is obviously the light. So, uh, and it's appropriate for what it is, uh, but a lot of times you, would, you do want to spotlight what you're, you're showing. This was kind of whimsical. It, it, I, I like it because this is an easy one for, for windows to make. Get some foam core, get a trans, you know, projector, transparency, draw your, your whatever you want, a Paris uh, buildings, Black holes, and you can have a fabulous window with the garments and the color is just going to pop. You can take one little item and paint it that color of the of the your your outfit, and it'll just draw emphasize that color. So I thought that was a, a clever store. And I think that's that is for me. Monica's next now. But do, um, did y'all have any questions or anything about the displays? How many do you need a Tiffany window? I'm installing that, I want to say, this, the first week in November. Yeah, that should be. But yeah, do go look at yeah. it. It's, it's a lot of fun. What, what makes it neat, because I have a lot of experience in, in obviously doing windows, but you got to know how to handle vinyl, all these, you know, how to cut and, 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 uh, and look at these things. Really visualize what's going on. Uh, a lot of times, what you get is a, a blueprint. Out of directions because every store has to look the same, so you got to be able to read that and understand how to execute it. But you'd be surprised if you can't visualize it, it's hard to execute it, even though it's in words and they have you know instructions. It, it's it, unless you can visualize it, I don't think you really get the full effect. So, I encourage y'all to when you read instructions, try to picture what's happening, don't just take it for what it is. Try to picture what movement is going on and the, and the words that you're getting for instructions. That always helps you. Uh, I'm always surprised, real quick. Uh, I actually did a, I was an accounting major for, I took a couple classes, and it was interesting because I did really well. But I think the, the reason why is because I could visualize what was happening in the transactions and, and the, what was going on with the money and all these, all these different things. And I was wondering, why did I do well in that? I think it's because I really depend on my visualizing abilities to see things. And I think if you if you do a little bit of that, you'll see some of the projects that you work on, 
you'll you'll be able to get ahead of it because you're able to you know, catch some maybe some mistakes that you're going to make because you're you're putting a, a thought process. So it's about thinking and creating. But uh, I think visualizing is very important. Don't just take it and, and let it stay there, but develop that visualizing part. I think you'll do really well with that. Can you hand over to Monica now? Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, <coughs> my name is Monica, and I uh, came to Incarnate Word, and I studied for many years. I used to take four buses a day, right in the front, wait for it to pick me up, and I got my degree, and I went into the workplace, and while I was working, I noticed that I um, wanted to evolve, and I wanted to experience things that were better, and I wanted to see how I could take a transition from interior design into other places, and I enjoyed it. I did the parade of homes, I worked with the firm, it was great. Then I reunited with George and realized we do the exact same thing. We didn't really know that at first. And so when we realized we did the same thing, we just kind of took off. Um, he comes from a lot of the standpoint of fashion and on interior design, and we kind of mesh those together. Um, we do put up our dukes from time to time, and that's the beauty of it. Um, sometimes we think that our ideas are better than the other, but we always come to terms with that, and we put those together, and we create wonderful spaces and things we really enjoy doing. Um, I wanted to start talking about your storefront potential because really, I mean, we're looking at 1939 before uh, the thought of display windows was even thought of. Um, people were trying to figure out, how do I sell my product? How do I make money? And so, see if I can manage to use this. And I turned it off. <laughs> Which button would it be? Okay. So, we start out here and then we go into the Apple Store, which is a great example of glass. In the 1800s, glass was created and it was created to be shipped and used. So here, this is a little nerdy version for you. Uh, this is a great example of how we can use glass to display. And so the idea before even the Apple Store in the 1800s was if I use glass as of my storefront, how can I uh, put my product in there for everybody to see and how can I make my product sell? Okay, and then so in 1938, we have a store in Paris called Le Bon Marché. And this store was the first idea and concept of taking all kinds of products and goods and selling them, kind of the, the owner thought of a town within a town. So every, this was a one-stop shop idea for everyone to, to come and, and see their merchandise and, and to sell, which is the point. Now, there was a man by the name of God, Gordon Selfridge, in 1909, and he took that idea and he ran. And in London, he created, in 1909, a uh, wonderful retail space. And this retail space gave the opportunity of more visual. And how could we make people look at us and buy our stuff? Well, this is his store. And so... He created this store that was mimicked after Paris, now we're in London, and this store needed some uh, ways to sell. And the way they wanted to sell was, what can we do? Let's, let's create a display. Let's create a window display. Who would have thought of that, right? So people can look at it right through that glass. And what is amazing is this guy, uh, benefited off of a, a man who was a pilot who crashed and at two in the morning he got his guys to go and get all this aircraft from the crash and bring it into the store by 10 a.m. and that became a visual display. And people came and there were over 50,000 people that came to see this visual display. So then we have a vintage window display, truly vintage in the sense that this was one of the first windows you had, and this was going on early, and here, like in the 1920s, we have our models. It wasn't a mannequin then. They put people, actual people, in the windows, and so these people were in the windows, 
and they go and they pose and they move and they play a piano for hours to get people to look at them. And here we have a wonderful essence of what it, it comes together when you have people and things and product. So all these things you see are giving attention to a product. And, um, and it all comes together eloquently. But then you have art and craft. So if you go back from then to now, you're like, what the? You, know, you just can't believe it. And this is a great display. I just wanted you to see the then and now so you can go, wow. Now we have evolutionized to this place where now we have color, we have depth, we have light, we have texture, we have all these things that come from interior design and jump right into the fashion world. So they go hand in hand, they're actually friends. Um, psychology of window display, and this is my closet nerd analysis. Here we have all the elements. We have above eye level, looking at signage on top, we have eye level, what your customers see when they drive or walk past you. We have lighting and how that creates a space. We have symmetry and spacing, what your eye expects to see and is used to seeing and responds well to. Uh, and then you have your audience there. And then the elements, of course, of design or window displaying, which sell your product ultimately. So I'll go over a few of those, um, or all of those. Choose a theme. Now here we have Burberry, Wonder, just wonderful clothing. Um, but choose a theme, uh, Christmas. But instead of Christmas, think Nutcracker. So don't think of terms in traditional, yes and no. Try and step out of that box and think of a creative way to say Christmas. A creative way to tell your story. And I just broke her note, sorry. <laughs> tell your story in a way that are, is going to get people to listen to you. Now, then there was light. How does light affect us? It affects our mood. It affects the story we're telling. What story are we telling? How are we telling it? Um, this is dramatic. It's mysterious. Why? Well, look at the colors. It's got purple in it. It's got shadowing. It's got uh, intimacy, um, a feeling of your mood. It can dictate where you take your customer, and that's important. Um, lighting creates an emotion. Well, what emotion is it creating here? Can anybody tell me? What's happening? How is the lighting making something happen? No. Well, the lighting is creating shadow. So now what's happening? Your wings are flapping. These birds are moving now. So now, your customer is going, ooh, all oh, of the birds. Ooh, there's dresses in there too. Well, that's cool. You know? So then what's inside that store? So then you start walking in the anthropology store, my favorite store of all time. Light pollution, light can be bad. Light can create unwanted effects. It can create, can create shadowing that you didn't uh, want to relate to your customers. It can take away from what they're wearing. I mean, I'm like, look at that cool vintage swimsuit she's wearing, but you can't really see it because it's all covered in shadow. So careful how you use your lighting. Make sure that you get it from the right angles. Step outside the box. Go outside the window. Look at how the customer sees it, not you from the inside. I mean, hello, it's really for the other person. It's not all about you, believe it or not. So. It's all about what you're creating and, and what you want them, the message you want your customer to see and what you're trying to relate to them. So make sure that you step outside and you walk it and you go across the street and you realize what they're really seeing and what you're offering them. Mood lighting again. Um, this scene automatically makes us feel like it's winter. The colors of winter, the shadows of winter, um, we have violet, we have green going up in the back, we have shadows here. So I feel cold, and they want you to feel cold. That's the whole reasoning why they're giving you this lighting, because they're telling you, it's winter. Buy some coats, hopefully, you know, hopefully like faux fur, but buy some coats and buy something that's going to make you warm and fuzzy. While you're at it, Get a coffee in our cafe 
and they're all about selling. They like you, don't get me wrong, but they want your money too, huh? So that's important. Like positive. Again, lining works for us in a positive way. It creates your mood. Now you feel cheery. Now you feel merry. Now it's Christmas. And you want to go and find evening gowns so you can go to that Christmas dance. So again, we're using lining to get you to purchase. I kept this uh, slide because it's simple and, um, and it's elegant, obviously. So it's really about the shoes, but, and then you have, like George was saying, the accessory, but all eyes are on that because we just really want them to see that in this window. So everything in the back kind of just fades out. And so everything in the foreground here is lit, and that's your, really your focal point. Drama lights. This is very dramatic. Why? Because of the color. And the lighting shines on the color perfectly. So then, now your flower comes to life. Now it's real. Now you want to go in and touch it. And you can't get your eye off that window. And anybody who says that that's not interesting is blind. Lights again. Very glamorous. Again, now lights defining. So now it's defining our space. Texture. Love this picture. Love the texture. Love the layering. Now you're, a thought, you're, you're getting into your senses of feel. So now you just want to go, oh, yeah, that's great. And it's all about texture in the fashion world. And so you want to go in there and you want to say, mm, I really want to buy that. The texture is so important. It's one of our senses. Look at this, Louis Vuitton. It's all made out of purses. Isn't that great? And it, it, it's all texture. And not only is it texture, go to your background. What does that feel like? That's gonna feel soft too. So we're applying to our senses. Where is that from? You know, um, I can get you that information. Because I am organized by George. Okay, let's see. Not that organized, because I didn't put where it's from. But I wish I could tell you. Um, but it's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. And um, it, it created something out of their product. And so that's what I mean. uh, Don't forget your message. Really important. Put your message in there. But don't put it in front of obviously. Don't put it in front of your display. You want it off to the side. You want it to where? Down here, make sure you have your brand. And up here, put your message. Um, you, do, you also want it eye level. And I'm walking by, and I'm like, who's it for? Uh, make sure that the eye can catch. It doesn't have to be right in the center. Make sure that your customer can see it. That's important, because then they won't know who makes it. Um, repetition creates movement. This is a, uh, a window display that uh, George created. I always say George created because he's like in the backyard cutting and melting and, and I'm like, I stand there going, that looks good. That doesn't look good. And he's like, you hate me. I'm like, no, I don't. But this is movement. So you can see the bricks in the background. Your eye just kind of flows and follows it. Was that at Meadows? Yes. Okay. And that's on the color, or almost. Movement keeps the eye looking for more, so you, you, you keep looking for more. Your eye is trained to follow movement, and so it'll just keep going. And movement creates visual interest. That's not what we did. That was fun. Keeping us enticed keeps you enticed. That means it won't let go of your interest. It keeps you in there. It grabs you, and it holds you, and you don't even know what's doing it. And visual interest creates money. So now they're going to call us back. George, can you come to our window again? Yes, we get to eat this week. This is great. It'll keep coming back. The money will keep coming. You're, not only is the person that you're doing the window for, your boss, is happy, but you're happy, and it's a win-win. Repetition. I love repetition. All these are elements of design. Funny thing. Who would have known, right? When I just started, I was like, George, do you really know what you're doing? I think I'm better than you. He's like, no, I know what I'm doing. He really knew what he was doing. They match. They go together. Repetition. Your eye is used to repetition. Go in threes. 
follow those. They went in four here. That's okay. Love the skirts, but love the colors, but my eyes going repetition. Again, repetition in threes. Bags, shoes, gloves, love it. Simplicity. Focal point demands attention. Focal, have a focal point, something that you're going to get their attention with, something that they can concentrate on, whether it be the bag, whether it be, oh no, what did I press? Stop. George, I'm going into no man's land here. <laughs> you know how to use this? Eric? <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. So there's your one. Contrast create depth. Don't be afraid to go this color and then go that color. Today I was going to wait, wear yellow shoes because I wanted to fit the point of the contrast. I just forgot. But now I remembered that I was supposed to wear yellow shoes. Because I wanted you to see the importance of contrast. Because if I had my yellow shoes on right now, you would totally be looking at me more. Right? So I have the red lipstick. So now you're like, ooh, poppy, right? Because I'm getting your attention. I found a clever way for you to pay attention to me. That's what they're doing. They found a clever way for you to pay attention to them. And so that contrast of color keeps you wanting more. Keeps you looking. Keeps you excited. Now you're not bored. You're not bored at all. Other thing. People are more bored today than they were back in 19, when was I born? Ooh, in the 70s. But now they're texting, and they're walking, and they're busy, and then, uh, right? No time for anything. But they also have a phone. You're going to take a picture with their phone of your work. That's something we weren't able to do. Ooh, who's this doing these windows? I want that girl. Poor dog. But... That's important for you to remember that now, more than ever, you need to get the attention of other people. And that's going to sell the product because you're going to be working at Neiman's. You're going to be working at Nordstrom's. You're going to be working at Macy's. Wherever you go, wherever you decide to go. And your boss is going to expect you to do things like this. They're not always going to call me. They're going to call you too. Or they're going to say, hey, you know what? I know that you're the stylist and mannequins. Get out there and do this. And I want it to look like it. And now you know. You're like, hmm, I remember that girl with the red lipstick. Death creates mood. Um, this is a pretense, and it's Burberry. And the uh, depth of the background color is coming with the color from the foreground, which is all these guys. And so now it's a mood. You've created a mood. And it's very whimsical. Balance. Remember your balance when you're doing these windows because balance gives us comfort and, and we're used to balance. We're used to things going here and here and okay, okay, now I can stand up straight. Everything has to be in balance. In life too, that's why I think you take dimensions of wellness here. It's about balance. Not only if someone wise was a company, God, they knew that balance was important. Because that's what, as a human person, you expect. That's what you gravitate to. So when you're doing it, try and keep light objects on top, heavier ones in the bottom, darker colors, maybe low ground, lighter colors, and not, even the sky. It's lighter on top, darker here. We kind of expect to see things in a gradual way. So that's balance. Unexpected invites imagination. Do something out of the box. Do not be afraid. I know this is your favorite window because of your face. Well, we want to see a lot of faces like that. This is great. Who is this, George? Louis Vuitton. Oh, I love it. Because who would have thought to take a big old giraffe and say, we're going to utilize this neck to put a bunch of ties on it. We're going to get you to look at it on a gold background. And then we're going to put our schnazzy little pieces here. We're going to sell those, too. So remember, be bold. Be daring. Don't let people tell you you can't. We are not wrong to push our vision. Anthropology. Adriana, the one that is taking that ratchet picture of me right now, <laughs> she worked for anthropology and she did wonderful things. From very creative, very visual. Um, and, and that's important. Um, that she was able to fulfill her creativity. And all that 
that detail and she was up all night doing it and for weeks. And it takes, it's very laborious. So you're gonna get tired and you're gonna get worn and you might even feel defeated. Get up the next day, do it again. Keep that passion. But don't be afraid to push your vision, what you feel inside and what you see. Because it's a gift. Um, I don't know how that got Okay, clever, bold attention. Made you look, huh, interesting. What are they even selling? Does anybody know? Lamps? What else are they selling? Furniture. But does made you look say, we're selling furniture? Because that would be boring. But now made you look, wow, they did make me look. And why did they make me look? Because they just tell me they made me look weird, <laughs> subliminal. But the lighting, look at the lighting. It's great. Because it implies more furnishings here. And they use it wisely. They use their message wisely. Be uh, inventive. Take your idea and say it differently. Don't say, we're selling furniture today. Say, made you look. And then they're like, oh, interesting. Done. Do you want to check the lights? <laughs> So guys, did, did y'all find anything that's useful for you guys? Things that kind of made you think twice about window displays, merchandising, of that sort? Um, I want to share a quick story how I kind of got started even doing window displays. I, I, I said, well, geez, okay, I went to the mall and I saw these window displays, right? I said, man, I can do better than that. Where do you start? I don't have a portfolio, I have no experience. So I, I said, you know what? I gotta think out of the box. I can't just go there and tell them I wanna do your window because I think I do a better job. So I took apart my living room and dining room, and then I created uh, lots of mannequins. I did my own window displays in my living room. My first one, I built a whole portfolio just from doing my own displays. And so when I did that, I made a portfolio. I did, you know, Photoshop and I put names on, on the on the on the displays. And, and so I had a whole portfolio. So then I walked in to a mall and I said, you know, my name is George Worth, I had some cards made, and I do window displays. And then I thought, okay, and they couldn't help but see that portfolio case. And I said, well, can I see some of your work? I said, absolutely. And once I did that, within a year, I had every mall in Houston and now skirts within, within a year. Just from taking that and taking the initiative and thinking out of the box. A lot of times you think you got to do it going to the front door, so to speak. There's the back window, there's the you know, back door, there's other ways to get in to where you want to get in and communicate what you can do. Be creative, even in your classes, you know, your, this is kind of your, if you will, uh, your competition, right? And so what are you going to do to show what you, what's in your head and what's in your, your passion? So keep that in mind because I kind of had to do that and figure it out. You know, I wasn't just going to walk away and say, no, you know, I'm going to, I don't even know where to go. No one's going to give me a job. I have no experience. I said, you know what? I could say a lot with a picture, a thousand words or more. So I said, I'm going to show them a lot of words in these pictures. And if they like what they see, then you know, I'll get to work. And that's kind of really how I got started. You tell them how you got to you know, market after that. Absolutely. But yeah. We just have uh, no, three to five minutes. But I want you to also tell them about the job y'all did for Anne. Oh, oh, yes. We, we actually had, gave them a job. Yeah. Opened up a lead for them. Through this uh, a, a talk that we did, uh, there was one with students. And Who was paying attention, <laughs> taking notes on the <laughs> And so she, uh, through a process and blessings, if you will, <laughs> uh, you know, gave us a call and said, you know, I want to open up a nail spa, their line across from the rim. And would y'all be interested in helping us? So we started that dialogue, and so we, you know, uh, in the story, we ended up doing a their nail spa. Our very and first huge commercial job to us. That was huge because it was yeah. from the ground up. It was ground up. So we did the whole like shell layout, plumbing, electrical, plans. everything, architect, everything involved in that was. Good. Yeah, and it didn't help that like, I had some of the engineering background because I was able to catch, believe it or not, a lot of cost-saving things that even the, the foreman wasn't really 
catching it. So we did, uh, you know, real, I feel real benefit for them and what they have. Uh, if you do get a chance, it's called Emmy Nelspa, it's Elon. You know, Not Elon, but Elon across from my antenna, Bob Dent. Super cute. It's not what your typical nail spa. It's kind of it's modern French and modern. French modern. So uh, I think you, you know, it's definitely different. Um, so, but it's you never know. It's called Amy. Oh, Amy. Yeah, Amy. Amy. E M M E. Oh, okay. What, what I was going to say too was one of the hardest things to be successful is just showing up. That's you're halfway there. You coming here, deciding to be in school and, and pursuing what you love, you're already halfway there. That's half the work, just showing up. Once you show up, that's your 50% there. You do the work, be passionate, it works out. You just gotta believe, don't, don't give up. You know, always think also business. Think about how you can apply it. And be realistic about that. And then you're gonna be a starving artist, right? <laughs> I mean, it's true. So you gotta be a balance in thinking business, but at the same time, how can you, you know, make a difference and express the things you want to do? Uh, so keep that in mind. I share that because I went through a journey myself, and there was a lot of times I could have said, you know what, I can't do this, or you know, people are turning me down. And I used to go uh, in Houston, get dressed up just like this, get my portfolio that I made, and I wouldn't come back until I got one account. I don't care what account it was. I don't come back home until I get something. And that's what I did every day until I got you know, a job I would come home. That was my goal. And if I got it in one hour, I wouldn't go after another one. I said, just one a day. And I quit. And then I had to stop because then you can have back growth. You know. So anyway, it's a, it's, it's a lot of technical, but the uh, point I'm trying to make, don't give up. Okay, Think out of the box. Take the back door of the window. And if you want to check out the things we do and some of the projects that we've done, um, she and Him Designs is our business, and you can find us on Facebook.